Hello friends, welcome to the class of the high voltage engineering. So we are in line with the discussion of the circuit breaker testing. So in previous lecture, I have discussed about in previous lectures, I have discussed about the uh, dielectric test, which includes the power frequency stand voltage test under the dry condition. And also I have, I had given the glimpse uh, that how to perform the uh, weight power frequency western water test and the impulse water test. In the uh, next lecture after that I have discussed about the uh, short circuit testing or uh, the direct testing on the circuit breakers which needs to be performed to assess the uh, ratings or the specifications of the circuit breakers. So in today's uh, lecture, in today's lecture, I'm going to discuss about uh, the uh, indirect testing uh, normally performed on the circuit breakers to uh, evaluate its performance quality uh, when it is subjected to the higher voltage stresses as well as the uh, short circuit current stresses during the fault condition. So let us start with the session or the presentation so the indirect test usually uh, includes the uh, two different types of testings. One is known as unit testing and second is known as a synthetic testing. So unit testing of circuit breaker uh, normally performed on the uh, circuit breaker in the unit wise. So almost all uh, modern extra high voltage circuit breakers, minimum oil circuit breakers, air blast circuit breakers, uh, the SF6 circuit breakers, etc. consist of two or more identical units or the interrupters per pole. Okay, so uh, in unit kind of uh, unit testings, uh, the circuit breakers can be tested by uh, by using or by, uh, by stressing their identical units or the interrupters which are available per pole. So unit wise it will be uh, performed. So these interrupters operate simultaneously and share the voltage across the pole almost equally. The braking capacity, as you know, that it is uh, uh, notified in terms of MVA, which is also shared equally uh, by these all interrupters. So the test on one unit can be accepted as a proof of all units. Okay, so during the unit testing, only the one unit is put up under the test by keeping the others isolated isolated means they are grounded so the test is performed only on the one pole and based on that result the uh, others can be accepted so such tests are called as unit test the unit testing uh, unit testing is an internationally accepted method so while applying a unit test the voltage is to be reduced by a factor of k and all the impedances should be reduced by the same factor of K in order to have the test voltage across the unit same as same as calculated from the formula. That is K is equal to 1 upon N uh, when one unit is tested together and is equal to M upon N when M number of units are tested together where N is the number of units per pole. Okay, so this is the factor by which uh, one has to reduce the voltage, okay, as well as the impedances. So let us take one case that suppose a three pole uh, 230 kilowatt circuit breaker with three identical units per pole is available for the unit testing. The test is to be performed at nominal voltage of 230 kilowatt. So voltage across each pole is 230 per uh, 230 divided by root 3 that is the per phase voltage and it is 132.8 kilovolt. So this is the information which is available with us. So now we have uh, we know that uh, uh, the uh, voltage which needs to be applied must be reduced by a factor of k. So k is equal to 1 upon n is equal to 1 by 3. So n is equal to 3. So voltage which is required for testing of one unit is K into 132.8 kV. So it is 
one third of 132.8 kV. So 44.3 kilovolt is needed to apply to the one pole of available circuit breaker during the unit test. Also, the L and C test circuit should be reduced to have the same natural frequency uh, as that of direct testing. So, Fn is equal to 1 upon 2 under L C in direct testing. So, in this case, it is Fn is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root K L into C upon K. So, obviously, you are getting 1 upon 2 pi under root L into C. So, natural frequency of transient pre-striking voltage again remains the same. So time scale also remains the same if you are taking 1 upon f whatever the time that you are getting also remains the same because the natural frequency of the transient pre striking voltage remains the same which is confirmed from the above equation. With the circuit breakers in which the voltage distribution across the pole is not evenly distributed among the units some units will be stressed more and the others will be less. Okay so this this will be the case where the circuit breakers in which the voltage distribution is not uniform. The test should be performed so as to test the highest stress coming over the unit. Statically, uh, uh, statically the unit test has been established as a reliable testing method. So now the synthetic testing of circuit breaker. So synthetic testing is a practical and economical solution for testing the circuit breaker of high rupturing capacities or the high breaking capacities without actually using the corresponding short circuit capacity of the testing station. So synthetic uh, test circuit is designed to simulate as accurately as possible the electrical stresses impressed on circuit breaker during the interruption of fault current under the system conditions because when the circuit breaker when the circuit breaker is interrupting the short circuit current the over voltage magnitude may strike across the circuit breaker contact so it is very important for the engineers to know about the behavior of the circuit breaker while it interrupts the current. So this information we cannot collect by conducting the short circuit test. Okay. So to assess the performance of the circuit breaker, to assess the performance of the circuit breaker under the presence of the short circuit current and the uh, restriking voltages, the synthetic testing is to be performed. So synthetic test makes use of two sources, one that is the current source which is of relatively low voltage and the voltage source which is of relatively low current. So in other ways it can be known as the high current low voltage source and high voltage low current source. So these are the two sources which you generally found in the circuit of synthetic testing. Okay, so which is what it is shown into this circuit diagram. So here you have the short circuit generator uh, which is intended to produce the short circuit current and one uh, high voltage source which is used to produce the higher voltage stress across the circuit breaker when the current interrupted, uh, short circuit current which is interrupted by circuit breaker achieves natural zero position. Okay, so by using this synthetic test uh, circuit one can assess the performance of circuit breaker while the circuit breaker is interrupting the fault current. So the current source is to be provided uh, by the short circuit generator. So it provides the short circuit current while the voltage source uh, provides a restriking voltage in addition to the reco uh, recovery voltage. So that can be adopted by, uh, by spark overing this S2 switch. Okay, so this is generally either the road gap or the sphere gap. Okay, so when the voltage across this uh, this gap or the spark gap uh, exceeds its withstanding capacity, the short circuit is arising. As an effect, the capacitor which is previously charged will instantaneously discharge its energy across the circuit breaker which is under the test in the form of the high impulsive voltage. The R 
okay the r l and c okay r l and c are used for having the desired conditions means to which you can uh, one can regulate the frequency of the restriking voltage the switch s1 is generally a make switch or making switch which is uh, which is closed for supplying short circuit current ig at a desired moment where ig represents the uh, current uh, supplied by the short circuit generator at near final current zero the switch s2 usually a spark gap is being closed and vs is applied to the circuit breaker under the test at an appropriate moment so this is the simple uh, flow of conducting a synthetic testing now why why this name is specifically given as a synthetic because here you can see the two sources are there the two different sources are there so that is a composition of the two different sources as a result the name is given as a synthetic test so the voltage will have the transient because of this l and c of the circuit so the advantages of this synthetic testing is this method is very simple and can be applied to the unit testing as well the method make up, uh, makes possible to test the circuit breaker of capacity of five times that of the capacity of test one the circuit breaker can be tested for desired values of transient recovery voltage and rate of rise of restriking voltage the short circuit generator has to supply the current at relatively uh, lower voltage uh, compared to the direct testing because the voltage support is provided by the high voltage source and both test current and test voltage can be independently controlled okay so it will provide a better flexibility a uh, better flexibility uh, while conducting the test so synthetic test circuits are again of two types depending upon how the current is flowing into the circuit one is the parallel current injection method and second is the series current injection method so let us discuss about this parallel current injection method so here uh, uh, you can see the circuit diagram for the parallel current injection where where the voltage source is connected in parallel with the current source and just below it you find the waveforms so parallel current injection method is widely employed for testing circuit breakers because it can provide a uh, high frequency transient voltage uh, as per the standard needs okay so in uh, this figure a the figure a will represents the parallel current injection where the voltage circuit 2 okay this is the voltage circuit which is connected in parallel with uh, the current circuit as you can see over here okay and the test circuit breaker uh, before the uh, main current ig that is short circuit current in the test breaker current is properly simulated so this is your test circuit breaker okay so between this short circuit generator and this uh, high voltage source the circuit breaker is connected so initially the short circuit uh, generator is excited and the current limiting reactor lg is set to provide the desired test value of current afterwards after achieving the desired value of the test current the make switch s1 here you can see this making switch so ideally you can uh, consider this portion as your short circuit generating plant okay so the make switch s1 is kept open and the auxiliary breaker and the test circuit breakers are first closed okay so before closing this making switch after achieving the desired value of the short circuit current Uh, one has to close the master breaker which is a backup breaker and the circuit breaker under the test in a closed condition so in the voltage circuit in the voltage circuit as you can see over here the ch which is charged to a provide a uh, charge uh, which is previously charged to provide the required voltage and the spark gap s2 is set ready to be fired okay so you have to uh, fire this uh, spark gap 
when the current which is flowing into this short circuit circuit loop is achieved to zero value so when it approaches to zero this triggering gap must be sparked over as a result uh, whatever the volt energy has been stored by this ch the capacitor high voltage capacitor will discharge its energy into the circuit breaker so lh here lh not lg this is the lh is so chosen that when ih that is the high voltage current flows consequent to the triggering of the gap the rate of change of current through zero is the same as that that of the paste current so ch is selected to provide high voltage capacitor is to provide the required transient striking voltage at the natural frequency so mix switch s1 is closed and the normal frequency 50 hertz of short circuit current is flowing in the circuit breaker okay so this will be the waveform of the short circuit current at instant of t0 here you can see that at instant of t0 the auxiliary breaker that is your master breaker and the test circuit breaker begin to open so that they are fully open at following current zero that is t2 here you can see that the circuit breaker starts to operate so during its opening the spark is created so the voltage at which the spark is created is known as a arc voltage okay so at time of t0 at time of t0 the auxiliary breaker and the test circuit breaker begins to open so that they are fully open at when the current approaches to zero the short circuit current approaches to zero so here you can see that at t2 the circuit breaker contacts are fully open so at time t1 okay at time t1 the spark gap s2 is triggered and the current flows in the test circuit breaker which is the combination of uh, which is the combination of ig and ih so the frequency of this current is determined by the lh and ch and the time uh, so that this peak approximately coincides with zero of the current ig so here you can see over here at instant of t2 okay uh, sorry at instant of t1 at instant of t1 this spark gap is triggered as a result as a result the current will be superimposed it means that the total amount of current which is now flowing through this circuit breaker which is under test is ig plus ih okay so the frequency of this current can be uh, determined from these values ch and lh and its peak approximately coincide with the zero of ig which you can see over here at time equal to t2 so at time t2 when uh, the short circuit current becomes zero it is interrupted by the auxiliary breaker and the test circuit breaker carries the current ih from the voltage circuit so at time of t2 at time of t2 the master circuit breaker gets open circuited as a result now the current which is flowing through the circuit breaker uh, which is under test is the current supplied by the high voltage circuit that is ih only here you can see in the waveform so when this current becomes zero okay at t3 moment at t3 moment the current supplied by the high voltage circuit is become zero the restriking voltage or the transient voltage appears across circuit breaker contacts which you can see over here okay so as current reduced to zero the transient voltage appears across circuit breaker contact so the magnitude and the frequency of this restriking voltage during this transient stage uh, can be calculated from the values of ch and lh so this will enable the supply of current and the voltage at the moment of zero current from one and the same source okay so this is how the performance of the circuit breaker can be evaluated by this parallel current injection method so thus the breaking capacity up to 10 or more times the short circuit capacity of short circuit generator can be achieved 
and the base circuit breaker can be subjected to exactly the same stress as in actual system okay so this is the uh, benefit of this synthetic testing the last one is the series current injection method so if we if we considering the previous case where you have seen that the uh, short circuit generator uh, circuit and the high voltage circuit both are connected in parallel okay whereas in case of series current injection you can see over here both the circuits are connected in series okay so this is the <coughs> uh, current circuit and this is the voltage circuit both are connected in series okay so this circuit is differ from the parallel current injection in a way in which a small loop of current from the voltage source is introduced which you can see over here the voltage circuit is connected across the auxiliary breaker as you can see in the circuit diagram that the voltage circuit is connected across auxiliary breaker instead of test circuit breaker and the source capacitance ch is charged to the opposite polarity with the result that the injected current flows in the direction opposite to that of 50 hertz current and thus subtract from it as shown in the figure so here you can see that this is the uh, this is the direction of so here you can see this is the direction of the uh, short circuit current okay and here you can see uh, this is the direction of this is the direction of the current which is flowing by, uh, flown by the voltage circuit so both are in opposite direction okay both are in opposite direction so they will usually subtract okay each other as you can see in this figure across this auxiliary breaker okay so here you can see that the test breaker is connected in series between the current circuit and the voltage circuit whereas in case of the uh, parallel injection method the circuit breaker under the test is connected across the uh, current circuit and the voltage circuit so in this case in case of the series current injection method uh, the current at the auxiliary breaker will cancel out each other so as the voltage and uh, as the voltage and the current circuits are uh, in series connected through the breaker uh, it is rather difficult to choose the circuit parameter to suit uh, both the current and voltage circuit which would at the same time provide the required restriking voltage transient okay so uh, there will be some modifications which you can observe in the waveforms as well okay so here you you have the difference of ig and ih and uh, after uh, time lapse when the current uh, supplied by the short circuit current uh, short circuit current achieves a zero value okay uh, only the circuit uh, circuit breaker carries the ih current so when this ih drops to zero uh, the transient voltage appears so ultimately here uh, you find the extension of the time okay previously at uh, uh, t2 moment the circuit breaker context comes in a fully closed, uh, fully open condition, whereas in case of series current injection at time t2 dash, the circuit breaker context come in a fully open condition. So this arrangement is particularly, uh, particularly well suited for the low frequency circuits. So this is about uh, the series current injection method and the parallel current injection method. In short, it is all about the synthetic circuit. So synthetic testing is usually uh, done on the circuit breaker to check its performance under the uh, presence of the short circuit current as well as under the presence of the uh, transient voltages. So this is about the testing of circuit breaker. Thank you.